Greetings! Welcome to the No More webinar series. This series is our On Your Way judges regarding our On Your Way Talent Scholarship Program. Today we have with us our visual arts judge, Stan Greedis. If you were not able to watch this live, these are, this is being recorded and will be available on demand. Hopefully you can tell all your friends. I'm Christy Calloway, the Executive Director of Art Schools Network and today's host. Art Schools Network is dedicated to making art schools better. And one way we do this is by getting feedback from you. On today's webinar, we'd love for you to post questions or concerns, comments, suggestions in the chat box or the question box to the right, and we'll make sure the presenter addresses that for you. So today's series is sponsored by the College of Charleston, while the actual scholarship program is sponsored by Earth, Wind, Fire. This program is designed for students in several art forms to apply online and get used to the process of being pre-screened through an online portfolio for post-secondary studies. They get real feedback from judges, and the judges are members of prestigious faculty, excuse me, are faculty members of prestigious art schools. Um, the winners of these, in addition to the comments, will get a um, $500 minimum scholarship as well as a lot of opportunities from our membership colleges. We send on their personal contact information and they're offered some special invites and um, exciting things that we're not allowed to provide, um, but the direct institutions are able to. So another perk is that you will preliminary, you'll automatically bypass the Young Arts preliminary round. So for example, last year's winners from 2012 are currently bypassing the first round of adjudication and are automatically in the second round for Young Arts. And Young Arts is the only way to get to the U.S. Presidential Scholars, so um, this is a great second opportunity for you. Today, we're going to actually be talking only about On Your Way, and we're only going to be talking about visual arts, and we're featuring one of our judges. We have two judges for the category. We'd like to welcome Stan Greedis to the call from ArtsBridge. Hi, Stan. Good afternoon. Okay, I want you to speak nice and loud for me, Stan, and um, tell me a little bit about yourself and your career pathway. Our audience enjoys finding the um, indirect way to success in the arts, and you have quite an interesting resume. You've got a couple things to hit on. Where are you now, and how did you get there? Well, first of all, thanks, Christy, and thank you, everyone who's listening in. I think it's a great opportunity for us to connect, even if it's electronically. Um, I've, I'm in my 37th, uh, almost 38th year in higher education. Um, I, I currently live in New York City, but I've lived in a lot of different places. I have experience in uh, all areas of graduate and undergraduate, but most, in, most particularly in the, in the visual and performing arts, and visual arts is one of my favorites. Uh, I worked at the University of New Mexico, as you can see on the slide. I also um, worked for 20 years at New York University, where I was the head of enrollment for the Steinhardt School. And if you're familiar with NYU, the Steinhardt School includes many, many things, but it also includes the visual arts and art professions department of NYU, which is pretty, pretty world famous. Um, my, my goal is to assist students who are applying to undergraduate programs and give them sort of behind the scenes information about how to be successful in terms of admission, but also to be successful in finding the right school as well as finding possible financial aid. Well, that's, that's perfect because the financial aid, we have created a special slide for you to kind of review what you think is most important as, and I want to allow you to take time to, to address that? Well, financial aid, I mean, ultimately, financial aid is half of the formula for, for higher education. So if, you, if you're heading off to college and you're the most talented student in the world, um, if you can't afford it, it's not going to work for you. So the most important thing with financial aid is think that uh, don't exclude yourself from the possibilities. Financial aid is out there, and it's available. And you just need to sort of do some investigation about the best ways to, to uh, obtain it. The second one, um, the financial aid, we have a little typo there, <laughs> can be need-based or merit-based. That's an important <laughs> thing to keep in mind. Um, if you have a family income that's not at, at the national level, you, 
you can submit the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, to receive need-based aid. That will be pretty much the same at every institution. However, many art schools and art departments like to reward talented students. So your portfolio could be reviewed for merit-based scholarships. And the most important thing there is that money goes away really fast. So never, ever, ever, ever miss a deadline. The most important thing, deadlines are really, really key. Students can get 500 to 1,000 to 10,000 to sometimes a full tuition scholarship based on the institution and the institution's goal in who they want to recruit into their program. You're very uh, lucky in terms of having the ability to do lots of research online. Um, that's something in the dark ages when I was applying to college that wasn't available <laughs> to us. And so I would suggest that you do a lot of research online and find out about scholarships for the arts. There aren't as many as we wish there would be, but they're certainly out there. And these are outside funds as opposed to the ones that are offered through the institution. <coughs> That's great. Good advice. Um, keep going. <laughs> La lastly, I would suggest that you talk to your family. Your mother or father may belong to a company that offers scholarship support to, to families. They may belong to organizations or sororities or fraternities or fraternal organizations. And you just have to sort of ask around and see what the story is. And of course, the one thing I don't want to skip here is talking to your counselor in your high school, because they're usually a very good source of, of financial aid possibilities as well. I think that's fantastic. Um, no parent would regret getting too much financial aid. <laughs> Never. And in fact, um, when, when I was hiring people for uh, jobs, I would see on their resume that they would list that they received certain scholarships. It becomes something that goes on your resume, and it becomes bragging rights pretty much for the rest of your life in terms of applying for jobs, and it can be very valuable. Wow, I had never thought about that as a resume builder. That's fantastic. That makes it especially for merit-based um, scholarships. Wow, that's great. Very important. If you're hiring an artist, you want to make sure that the artist knows how to do art in, as well as you know anything else that you need from them. So uh, the knowledge that someone received a merit-based scholarship really goes a long way. That, yeah, that implies they know how to meet deadlines and are accountable. And that's fantastic. Um, that's, thank you for mentioning that. The um, program that we're asking folks to apply to right now is called On Your Way. It's that talent scholarship program. The deadline is November 15th, and the way you can apply is through our website. You'll click on a link that takes you straight to the portal where you upload your portfolio materials. Um, you, this is a screenshot of what that website looks like, and you can see the drop-down menus where you'll select the program. So for, for this call, it would be visual arts. And then you can get started real easily by just using your Facebook um, sign-in or login and other social media. Um, you're asked to upload these files, which we're going to discuss about um, what good files look like, good submission materials, and, and how you're going to be scoring them in a minute with our judge. Um, and then at the end, you submit the $25 fee, either through a credit card or a scholarship or um, a school waiver. There's a lot of ways to pay for this, so please do not um, not apply. If, there, if finance is an issue, just contact us and we will make that work for you. Um, so here's what it looks like for the judge, and we're going to hear from that judge in a second. This is the screen where your um, uploads will be visible and accessible to the judges, and then they'll slide this bar over left to right um, from 1 to 100 and score you um, and send a message to you about your, your actual performance or your portfolio. So let's get into what you're going to upload, and I've asked our judge, Stan, to tell us about, um, to address each one of these and give a good example or a bad example or both. And um, we're going to click through some of the guidelines and then the rating of the criteria. So, so Stan, please address this first one about the portfolio's total submission. Happy to do that, Christy. Um, the most important thing here, and you can see that, that we're asking for 10 of your best works from the last two years. You really want to make sure that it's very recent work. That's to your advantage, because probably you've gotten better with the art that you've done five years ago compared. And so that's an important thing. 
you want to you want you want to demonstrate the most important thing here you want to demonstrate is your skill and your commitment by commitment we mean ultimately that you want to show your ambition so your works must be original but they must also be something beyond a classroom so that it's not just something you did for a class but something that you may have started in a in an art class but that decided that you wanted to work on in more detail and it shows ambition that you went back and looked at it and decided to make it even bigger or more complex or much more interesting uh, but it must be original work and we have ways of finding that out because of the web and I don't think we'll have any problems there with the with that <clears throat> and the next one then So here's where we're looking for, of the 10 um, works that you're going to provide, the, the belief is if you could put at least five of them together to show a cohesive idea. So we're looking for a concept here, taking your work and showing us sort of a progression, but not necessarily a progression, but mostly it usually generally it becomes a progression of the work that you've done that has a, a similar theme and that's very important in particular if you're applying to art programs or if you're using a portfolio to apply to regular programs when you apply to college they do look for that but that may be just one thing and you don't want to be unidimensional so the other thing that we would look for is five additional works so that makes the total ten and this should show another strength or something that supports the first five. So if you have five pieces that are sculpture and it has a sort of theme to it, you want to show the committee that you can do other things besides sculpt. You want to show the committee that you can draw from life, that you can paint, that you can do um, <clears throat> multimedia work. Anything of that nature I think would be very useful for submitting for us. And you know if you do sculpture, sometimes if it's a big piece, it's hard to really get a sense of it in one image. So we do allow mm -hmm. for one detail shot for each of the sculptures or something that you think needs a detail. That's fantastic. That's a great comment. Um, last year we actually had some installation artists and so their 10 images were um, the process of the installation which was quite fascinating. And then the final product um, since it was such a large scale endeavor. Very interesting. Um, and always a challenge to, to um, portray. Program. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, that's, that's so helpful. Thank you. Now, in the scoring as a judge, um, you, we've, we've uh, contained it to these three criteria. It could easily be three others or ten others, depending on which school you're applying to. But, but speak to these three and, and then what happens with these three. Well, the key to a portfolio presentation is you don't want to be judged by the way it looks. You want to be judged by the artwork that's in the images. So anything that you do that distracts from that actual artwork is not helpful. So you want to make sure that your presentation, which is the second one here, these aren't necessarily in order of importance, but the presentation format is essential because that shows that you took the time and spent the energy on making it just right. So that's probably the first thing that faculty, faculty and uh, committees that review this will look at. Um, the others are very important as well. The originality in terms of, oh, I've never seen that before, or I've never seen it from that angle before, or I've never thought of art that way in terms of creativity. That's also very important. And then the quality and choice of materials. And that's really straightforward. There's no surprise there. You just want to have the best that uh, the best of the the materials that you can use for your work. And you know that's a sort of a judgment call, but I think that you'll know it when you see it. When you say best of materials, um, could you elaborate on? It doesn't have to be expensive materials. It does not have to be expensive materials for sure. Um, you just want it. You want it to look like you had that you were thoughtful about what you selected to use. And so if you're using, um, for example, <clears throat> some um, paper, because you're creating a sculpture from paper, you want that to be very attractive and you want it to be the best paper that you can use because that's really representing your work as well, uh, in addition to what the final 
the final work looks like. So, for example, with paper, but it doesn't have to be the most expensive stuff. And, you know, some of the most creative things that we've seen over the years are pencil drawings, and certainly that's not expensive. That's great. Thank you for Im imposing that. Um, and the same goes across all the art forms with, like, costuming and, and literally every, every component. Uh, money, budget doesn't uh, produce merit. The artist statement, um, this is unique to each art form, and how should the visual artist consider this when approaching it over time? Well, artist statements, I think, are the biggest challenge that visual artists face, because I think that they think they're, um, they might struggle with putting their work into words, if you will. But it, it's actually pretty simple. You want it to reflect beyond the art that the committee is looking at. So if they're looking at a certain series of images, you want to talk about what got you to those images. Like what, what artists do you admire? What is your basic belief in what art should do or where art should take you? You don't want to make it too cerebral. You want to make it really accurate and represent your beliefs. You want to make sure that it looks like you wrote it so it needs to be from the heart about what you believe in terms of art and what you believe in terms of certain artists and how they've impacted on your world. So you, you could easily talk about growing up in Paris and the impact that the Parisian attitude toward art has on you as opposed to maybe growing up in Texas where, or in this case, I actually can give an example of Philadelphia, where there's not really a lot of art teachers in the high schools. So you have to, you have to sort of create your own environment, and that's great. And your artist statement should talk about how, how you did that and where you, where you took that. It that just, that's it fantastic. It shouldn't be too long either. It shouldn't be too long. Just about three or four paragraphs is long enough. Yeah, I like the, I like the um, juxtaposition um, concept of, to come out of the – to, if you're kind of stuck about what to write about, come talk about what it isn't and what it is in your life. That's Absolutely, and you can always just you can always find an artist that that you admire very much, and find out what they think about art and what got them there, and that may give you some ideas as well. That's great. Where can where does one see an artist statement professionally? Um, you'll see that, um, generally speaking, you'll see that at, at galleries and at student shows. One of the things I would very strongly suggest is going to an art school student show. Some of them are pretty extraordinary, and there's always art, artist statements associated with that. That's certainly one way to do it. There's many other ways to do it, um, but that's certainly the best way because what you're seeing is people who are generally close to you in age and sort of the things they write about. Um, there are many, many art schools in the country. Some of the finest ones have the most amazing art shows, and artist statements are always very present at those shows. That's great. Thank you um, for helping with that. Um, I believe, like through online exhibitions, artist statements are equally available. That's and true. When um, looking at, as you were talking about earlier, researching your favorite artists and finding out about their life, um, they might actually have an artist statement themselves. That, um, for, you know, some were so prolific um, writers as well, you know, and reflectors. But I, I'm getting off topic, and I apologize. <laughs> I love the artist Fine. statement. Well, let's go on to the it's next the one. It's the hardest so, part, so it, I'm glad we spent time on it. It is the hardest part, and um, it's what we get asked most about. And on our website, we've actually provided a step-by-step -step how to write an artist statement to just help the um, creative juices get flowing. And so um, I appreciate the indulgence. Um, well, lastly, so we're wrapping up here, and I want to make sure that you've hit on all your points before I talk about the other episodes. Do you feel good about um, the On Your Way application so far and, and, and the caliber of work you're seeing? Yes, indeed I do. Um, the work that I've seen so far from the first students who have submitted has been very diverse, and there's been very interesting things to look at, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. That's great. Um, thank you for, for commenting on such. We have a past episodes with other judges similar to Stan for the other categories, acting, classical voice, dance, filmmaking. Um, and then we hope that you will go to our website and, and take a peek at those and send us any questions you might have. Um, going forward, this is a, a, 
a series that was created by members for members. So all of the schools that are applying are members, all of the judges are members, and we're hoping that um, you too are a member. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Stan, for joining us. My um, pleasure. Thank you to, so much for asking. We look forward to having your results combined with the other judges and making the grand announcements in December. Um, any last words, parting words for our audience? Um, yes, I think I would say be proud that you're an artist. Don't let, ever let anyone tell you the story of a starving artist because there's starving psychology majors and starving history majors and starving English majors. Never ever let anyone talk about starving artists because artists have careers. They also have, you know, art to come home to every night. <laughs> Amen. Go to bed and wake up with art all around you. That sounds like a, with a way to live. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us again, and we hope you have a productive artistic life. Goodbye. Goodbye now.